stations. If you encounter any technical issues related to this live show broadcast, please call our trouble hotline at 336 464 1806. Mark, two minutes until airtime for this live show broadcast. Your next time cue will come with one minute until airtime on the Rice Sports Network. We're coming up on one minute until airtime. One minute in five, four, three, two, mark. One minute stations, one minute until airtime for this live show broadcast. Studios, when you hear, please start your archive recording. Coming up on 30 seconds until airtime on my mark. Mark, 30 seconds. Your next and final time cue will be with 15 seconds until airtime. Coming up on 15 seconds until airtime. Mark, 15 seconds stations. Have fun. The following is a Learfield presentation of the Rice Sports Network. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield, live from Acme Oyster House, welcome to the Mike Bloomgren Show. Acme Oyster House, life's more fun with seafood. The Mike Bloomgren Show is brought to you by The Parking Spot. We have airport parking covered. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716. Lighting up Rice University and Houston for over 100 years. Now, alongside Coach Bloomgren, here's the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, 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 you know it here? Victory Monday. I could get used to these. Yes, indeed. It's the Mike Bloomgren Show yet again here at Acme Oyster House. We got Monday Night Football on the tube. Saints are on, so you know it's going to be a wild scene here and uh, not doing half bad. Uh, Boz and our Steelers are also on uh, somewhere out in the Monday Night Football universe. I know this is the week they have a couple, but here to talk about the Rice House big win against Texas Southern. Uh, big shout out to Sydney Servering. She's in the back there. Uh, Timmy running things back in the kitchen here. Acme Oyster House. <laughs> they love their saints here at Acme Oyster House. Uh, but here's to Red Beans and Rice University. Acme Oyster House, proud sponsor of Rice football after the game. Uh, come join us for a fried seafood platter, shrimp, po' boy, or a dozen char-grilled oysters. Acme, the best little oyster house in Texas, home of the Mike Bloomgren Show, Monday, 7 until 8 p.m. It's 1201 Westheimer, and it's uh, always fun on a victory Monday. And I had some good uh, victory grub. What was I thinking taking this long to get me some uh, good old meat pies and went back to the old uh, trusty standby uh, Boom Boom Shrimp Tacos? Just amazing, amazing food. They've got a nice bar set up. There's black and white checkerboard uh, tablecloths here and uh, great sit up here in the corner with this nice new big banner that our uh, friends there on the stream uh, can see right now. We're on the uh, Owls Facebook, YouTube, and uh, Twitter slash X streams as well on the Varsity Network app and the Rice Owls Game Day app as well. So 
Uh, Rice coming up this Saturday, opening up the American Athletic Conference era. And if you did not see, that game has been announced as a 3 o'clock start time. They announced it last week. And just today, it was announced that the ECU game uh, coming up, our next home game, that's going to be a 6 o'clock start time. So put that in your uh, scheduling devices. But a lot to get to. We talk about our big O lineman, my uh, kindred spirits here. Ethan, came back for another year, so it must not have been too bad on my part last year, right? Thank you very much. The, uh, the big dancing bear, Ethan Onianwa, will join us. And we have uh, native, two native Houstonian uh, offensive linemen on the show as we have uh, former Nebraska Cornhusker. And in my Rolodex, I should have prepped, Brandt, but Westbury Christian mascot, Wildcats. I can't say I, I committed that to memory. So uh, we have some uh, Houston football talk, no doubt, but uh, centering on the Rice House side of things. And we have offensive line boss Sanders Davis coming on as well. But a lot to get to coming up next. We'll talk to Dunleavy family head football coach of our Rice Owls, Mike Bloomgren. Off and rolling here at Acme Oyster House. Stay with us. It's the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Football fans are passionate, just like John Deere fans. And if you're a John Deere person, the name to know is Shoppers. In football, it's about calling the right place. The right call for John Deere equipment is Shoppers. Shoppers has a right-sized John Deere tractor with attachments for any job. You can build your tractor online with Shoppers exclusive Build It, Price It, Own It tool. See all our John Deere specials by Googling Shoppers at S-H-O-P-P-A-S. It's time for you to make the right call. Shoppers, equipment for your piece of Texas and proud sponsor of Rice Alley. Athletics. Hey, Oscar, Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar, the talking spokes oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char grilled, a seafood platter or po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come Acme, bro. Not you. Acme Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. Owls fans, you may not think of yourself as an athlete, but everyday life is full of athletic feats. You bend, you reach, you lift, you twist until back, neck, or shoulder pain hits, which brings you to a stop. So whether you're an athlete or not, the Joint Chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you on the active list. Visit any of our 40-plus Houston area locations or thejoint.com today to get your first consultation, exam, and adjustment for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic, the official chiropractor of Rice University Athletics. Aw, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes, Sync My Game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow, uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. You're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. Yes, 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 you know it. Thanks to Clara back at the studio. Walter here on site. Coach, he has a birthday coming up on our road trip, so I have to dedicate this W to Walter coming up. But nice. don't leave your family at football coach, Mike Bloomgren. Yes, How are you doing? Doing great, man. Doing great. Yeah, outstanding. How about that? A lot of highs to get to about that game. Uh, most points in seven seasons, 42 first half points, and uh, most half uh, in the first halves in 15 years since the uh, North Texas game in 08. So, not just the offense, but just team wise from the the big uh, eye in the sky view. Uh, what did that win mean, and, and how how big was that? Getting so many guys some reps out there. Yeah, I mean, it meant a lot. It meant a lot because we did exactly, there were two things I wanted us to do. I wanted us to play a 60-minute football game to our standard, and I felt like we really did that, and I'm proud of that. Uh, we wanted to start fast and finish strong. So, you know, when you do those things, you always got a good chance in this business. And, uh, you know, obviously you can't start much faster than getting a turnover on the first play, and four four runs later you end up in the end zone. and. Uh, that's that's a pretty good way to go about it. And then we talked a lot about the middle eight, wanting to win the middle eight, the last four minutes of the first half and the uh, first four of the second half. Much like people talk about a ton in basketball, it, it's also become a metric in football, and, and we won that 10-0 the other day. So that's really good, you know, get a, get a chance to take advantage of those opportunities and 
we did play a lot of guys, like you mentioned, 73 different players. Different Rice Owls went out there. I think nine had receptions, 10 had rushes, and 19 individuals had tackles. So playing a lot of the future of our program, too. And so many of them got their first college football experience from Enoch Goda going in there on a kickoff and kicking the ball out of the stadium. You know, you're just like, holy cow, man. So a lot of them took advantage of those opportunities. That was really cool. And it was also just across the board, like defense stopped the run, really didn't give up the big plays, was great on third down. Offense, only one penalty, no turnovers, you know, ran the ball really effectively in the second half. So a lot to be proud of and, and a net sum as we're sitting here at two and one and, and we won the city of Houston. Mm-hmm. And you emphasize the last couple of games wanting to take the ball away for the other team. How big was that to not only take it away, but almost immediately capitalize on that, those turnovers you forced? Yeah, you know, you say things in the locker room as a coach, like, hey, we want it to go this way. We want to do this. We want to do that. And, <laughs> you know, one of the things we challenged them is, like, protect the football and uh, take that thing away. And it's like, who's going to be the first one? Who's going to get that first turnover and bring the ball back to the Owls? And for it to happen on the first play, it's like, hey, we should say that every time, huh? <laughs> Just asking you shall receive. But... Yeah, no, a lot of good things in that game and, and a lot to be proud of. Um, but just like when we were up here talking about Houston the week before, I mean, those two games are behind us. Now, uh, not completely behind us. I mean, they, they still exist on the record book. And uh, for our kids, we gave them a little swag to work out in today that says Houston made, if you can see that on the uh, old TV there. And on the back, it says uh, Bayou Champs. That is so, awesome. Bayou City Champs. So. Uh, I got asked today already by my players, like, hey, our parents want to buy them. Can we get them out there? And uh, that's somebody's, <laughs> somebody else's question. I'll ask uh, and see what we can do. But it would be great to have yeah. them. Yeah, stick the coaching and not the licensing. Uh, yes, sir. The, yes, the sir. quick turnaround on those shirts. Indeed. Chris um, knows the best. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. No doubt that it's Chris. Um, how about Dallin Alexander? Nose for the end zone. Two more touchdowns. on the, on the the But just overall getting the ground game going like you, you know it, it should be. Yeah, I think that was really important that we were able to have success running the ball. And, you know, there's always a lot of things that play into that when you're having success or when you're not having success. And so it was great to see those things come together and uh, really have some effective run game. You know, and I still don't think whether you're talking about our offensive line, our tight ends or our running backs, I don't think we're anywhere near where we're going to be. But you did see some incredible efforts, some incredible one on one blocks. You saw some uh, people seeing the game the right way through one set of eyes. You saw backs hitting the right cut. Just not every time. So that's what we're searching for is, is that. And then, you know, I left out receivers. When you talk about the run game, nobody thinks about them. But there was an awesome example of Landon Ransom coming across the field and blocking a safety 20 yards downfield. Mm-hmm. And uh, those are the kind of things that can spring you for a touchdown. So we're all on the right page. We understand what needs to be done. And, and we are making progress in that realm. We're certainly a work in progress, but making – we're work in progress, but making progress. Uh, on the defense, uh, you hit on it some, but the seven points allowed, the fewest since that big shutout win at Marshall. We all remember that three years ago. Uh, what kind of identity are you seeing start to form or confirm what you already knew about the defense before the year? Yeah, I think they're a physical front, and they're going to give people a lot of problems. And I think the discipline that we're showing on the back end, really playing top down, not allowing those shots to be caught, so getting people to third down and then getting off the field, it's a recipe for success. Mm-hmm. And Sean Fresh joined us after the game. How big the corners just these first few games? Because he, I asked him a similar question. He's like, hey, we formed that identity in the, on the offseason, but just the DBs and how they're doing really well in the, in the backfield here these, these first few games. Yeah, I think they really are. I think that, that group's working together great. I think not only the corners, but the safeties as well. They're doing so much better anytime they're, at, they're called on to run man coverage and cover their man. And, the other thing that's, that always helps when we talk about that back end, as you know, is, is pressure, pressure on the quarterback and those hits. And, you know, Josh Pierce, he had a pretty good line the other day. Uh, I think he had four tackles, one assist, two quarterback hits, and two TFLs. So when he can play like that and lead us in that regard, and then you've always got Coleman Coco playing like his hair's on fire. And those inside two spots, whether you're talking about DeBraylin and Isaiah or when Blake gets those opportunities, those guys are a lot to deal with right now. On the special teams, Tim Horn had a career-high field goal, uh, 48 yards. And uh, how about the overall special teams? You already mentioned Goda and like, cook it, kicking it almost through the back door of the vomitorium there yeah. in that south end zone. Yeah, I, I think all the special teams, once again, were special. I mean, there was two kicks that were returned. One made it to the 22, and 
we act like the world caught on fire, you know, and, and the reality is if, if they fair catch it, they get it at 25. So it's still a net three-yard gain for the, for the Owls. But then we had one inside the 15 where you see Max Ahoya showing up again on special teams. That's just exciting stuff. Those guys are covering those kicks. Also the big returns, seeing Fresh get a big punt return, seeing Dean Connors get a big – or not Dean, but uh, Drayden Dickman jumping in there and getting yeah. a big punt return uh, in his first action. That was a lot of fun. He could fly. We are talking could, about that. <laughs> yeah, he is the fastest guy on the team. There's no doubt about that. How about uh, when I have blowouts in other sports, I talk about the guys that get in there that don't get in there a lot. I know you, you touched on that a little bit, but just I think people know it, but they don't focus on a lot how much they work to get in that situation. So how valuable is it to not only get those guys kind of a fulfillment of all their, their hard work, but getting a lot of young guys reps? Yeah, I think those reps, I mean, rep, repetition is the mother of all learning. You've heard me say that before, and yeah. I just believe it's my core. And so when we can get those guys in per the new NCAA rule that, that started four or five years ago of four games and you can still redshirt, like when they earn the right to get in the game, we've got to give it to them. We've got to get them that experience because just like bowl practice last fall, all that stuff compounds and, and they just become better, better players faster than you ever imagined from those reps. Uh, player of the weeks, uh, players of the week, I guess. Who, who are our player of the week? Yeah, so our players of the week is the offensive line for their effort and pass protection. That's, you have two of those big fellas here tonight. And uh, for defense, we had Joshua Piercy. And for special teams, we had both the kickers, Tim for his 48-yarder and Enoch for jumping in there and kicking those balls pretty far. <laughs> so since you have the line here, discuss them and their maturation here these first uh, three games. And obviously proving with the, all those rushing yards, they did a, a lot right on Saturday. Yeah, they did. Uh, and again, like the biggest thing is coming out of our first game, you know, opening up with the University of Texas, which we know was a very, very good opponent and a, a very good defensive line. That's certainly proven to be true as we've continue, continued to watch college football thus far. But we didn't feel like they were able to perform at the level we expected them to in that game. And I thought against Houston, they took a really good step and protected the passer. And we know how special JT is. We understand how special those receivers are down the field, too. So when we give them time, it's just a lot of fun. And you saw that the other night. And, you know, I, I showed a couple of clips in the team meeting today of the O-line just pass protecting for like four or five, six seconds, whatever it was. And uh, I showed a little graphic of JT cooking steaks out on the grill and uh, it really with his football helmet on because I'm sure he does that. But uh, in any case, you know, um, it, it's just great that he has that much time and to see him slice and dice back there. Um, how about Ethan and Brant here specifically? Tell us, uh, we, we know a little bit more about Ethan from the right side, but Brant, local, uh, former local star coming back back home, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, still, we got to talk about Ethan. Just so glad he's here. And, you know, I don't know if there's anybody that's that's – challenged themselves more in becoming a better football player and worked at it more than Ethan Aniawa in the last couple of years. And to see that with the load that he takes uh, in academics, you got to ask him about his class schedule and all the labs and, and just how, how uh, again, he's really competing in the classroom just like he is on the football field every week. And then Brant Banks, like, what a big sell. Like, how lucky can the Rice Owls be that his freshman roommate was Luke McCaffrey at Nebraska and that he grew up behind the Whataburger off of Holcomb and used to, like, ride his bike around Rice Stadium? <laughs> it's like that is the stars aligning. That might be the easiest recruiting story I've ever been a part of. Uh, so when he fell into our laps, uh, we couldn't, couldn't express how grateful we were to, to him and his family wanting to come home, to Luke for bringing it up. And just uh, this thing's been really good. And, and if you remember back to spring, he was really starting to get it. He was really starting to ascend, and he had a little freak cut on his leg, and it held him out for a lot of spring. And so we were like, gosh, we just got to get him these reps. And uh, he's another one that probably is still learning, you know, details of our system, not from lack of studying, just lack of reps. And every freaking game, he's getting better and better and better. And I just can't, can't wait to see the finished products, what, what either of those two finished products are going to be, because they're going to be really exciting. A uh, two-part fan, qu a couple different fan questions relating to going on the road here. Uh, first, what's it mean finally starting? I mean, there was all the hype and buildup. I remember we were uh, over there, the Fuddruckers there down the road across there by the uh, 288 when we heard the news that day, right? So those two seasons ago, but now yep. that it's, it's finally here playing your first game in conference, what's the culmination of all that mean? Just, just that that moment there yeah i think that's just really exciting you know I, honestly it's it's probably better for you to have all the context and those things to talk about for me i'm like we're trying to go one and know this week and yeah. trying to figure out how to know when number zero is coming from the field and stuff like that but 
Um, you know, it, it's, it's really cool because it is the first American Conference game for us, and it's on the road. It's in an NFL stadium. Chuck brought it up to me yesterday that it's going to be the 10th stadium the Rice Owls have played in that hosted a Super Bowl. Uh, that's yeah. pretty cool. I don't know. That, that's a good trivia fact right there. Uh, but anytime you play in a pro venue, it's really special. Traveling, you know, when you go on the road, you always pack your defense, and that's what we got to make sure we do as well and be ready for if there is crowd noise, we'll be ready to execute with that as well. This answer is part of that question. You didn't even know it, but another fan asked me how uh, the road schedule and the road record has been tough the last couple of seasons. What is done differently if there are any different uh, keys and prep going into a road game, much less a conference road game? No, I don't know if there's anything we can can put under that plane that's going to help us more than those players. And that's what recruiting does for you and, and preparing the way we do from January to this point. So uh, I don't know. If there was something magical we could do different in the hotel or something, we'd do it. But I don't, I don't think that exists. Uh, finally, what's on the menu tonight? Did you get, get some good grub? Well, uh, I'm a creature of habit anyway, but okay. we've, we've uh, been playing pretty good football since I started ordering the uh, char-grilled oysters and the boom-boom shrimp, so I'm okay. not changing. Very good. I, and I knew I should have known that. Yep. But anyway, well, I'll keep asking you every week after Sounds I forget. Good. Mind of a goldfish, Coach. Mind of a goldfish. You like that? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, boss. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's Dunleavy Family at Football Coach for Rice Owls. Uh, Mike Bloomgren, stay tuned. The former Westbury Wildcat, uh, Brant Banks, will come up to the high table. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show live from Acme Oyster House from Learfield. Flight by Yingling, the next generation of light beer for those who don't follow trends but craft them. Flight by Yingling is uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment. Six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling, the official beer partner of Rice Athletics and now available for purchase everywhere in Texas. The Yingling Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Please enjoy responsibly. The passion. He's going to take it to the house. Dinner's cooking. Touchdown. The fury. Getting split. Down he goes. The speed. By 40. There he goes. Down the sideline. Western College football. For the end zone. Got it for six points. You cannot hitch the wagon. Put the ponies in the board. Back to the end zone. 30. 20. So this is the College Football Bliss. Listen all season long on College Sports Now on the Varsity Network. Whether running a marathon or walking your dog, every movement matters. But when you're in pain, simple activities can feel unbearable. At Houston Methodist Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, our specialists can help you heal faster using the latest technology, minimally invasive procedures, and advanced physical therapy. As the top-ranked hospital in Texas, we have the expertise to keep you moving and help you get back to doing the things you love. Houston Methodist, leading medicine. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Director's Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Director's Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Director's Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Director's Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. Rice teams and traditions are legendary. Our team as strategic wealth designers are proud to be a partner of Rice Athletics. What an honor to be working together. When you're ready to discuss your financial future, call the team the Owls Trust. We look forward to creating your winning strategy for retirement. Visit us at swdgroup.com today and go Owls. Highlighting the owls on the gridiron. Welcome back to the Mike Bloomgren Show. Yep. Welcome back here. The uh, Acme Oyster House, the Mike Bloomgren Show here as the uh, Rice Owls this week taking on South Florida. We'll talk about them coming up in a little bit uh, again with Coach. And our uh, O-line is the theme here the next few segments. And I learned so much in uh, a two-minute, I guess really minute, commercial break with uh brant banks joining us right now how are you good appreciate it thanks for having me yeah so you're no stranger to this type of thing take us back to the uh corn husker days uh, i'd like to learn more filling in like i mean obviously not nervous at all being a rice guy but uh, you, you've done these uh radio gigs before huh? yeah so uh me and my my roommate I had a german roommate and he was a uh, offensive lineman at nebraska we used to have a radio show every sunday called it sunday morning pancakes and we did something pretty similar to this we'd 
go out. Obviously, we're linemen, so we wanted to try different <laughs> restaurants every week. So a lot of places hosted us, and we basically ate free food, and people listened to us eat. That might have not been the best part, but we would just be smacking down food while we were talking. No, it seems to work well. Oh, very, it worked great. Yeah, very natural. Do you like the broadcasting side of things, kind of fast-forwarding like six or seven questions? Like, does that appeal to you after the playing days? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's fun. I think it's something that I'm, I'm glad I got to be, like, introduced to, you know, because I had never really done it until I started doing that, and I think it kind of has helped me, especially with interviews and stuff, just to kind of take a second and understand how to properly answer a question. Mm -hmm. What did it mean and what went into coming back here? Coach told us about you riding your bike uh, when you are a kid around Rice Stadium. Uh, was it that seamless of a transition and easy of a choice, I say in quotes? Yeah, so I'd say it was honestly probably the easiest choice I could have made. I mean, I, I grew up right around Rice, uh, like Coach was saying. Um, Luke McCaffrey came in early and rolled with him uh, to Nebraska, so that another connect I had to Rice, and nothing can beat a Rice NBA. So that, I mean, that was also another reason, and the coaching staff Coach Bloom has was, it pretty much sells itself. So, I mean, getting the opportunity to come back here, for me, was a no-brainer. What was Luke like then compared to now? Have you seen the obvious age maturity, I'm sure, but uh, give it... Yeah, so. I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'd, I'd honestly love to sit here and say I could, but uh, it's pretty similar. <laughs> pretty, pretty... Yeah, he's still, pretty, he's still the same old Luke. I mean, he's the Pop-Tart Player of the Week and stuff, but he's still yeah. Luke, right? Yeah, speak, staying with the uh, culinary theme, uh, I saw Luke tweet that out, lots of... Pop tart, so many dozen because he got that other. I guess he just took. I didn't ask coach about that. He just took the ball away from uh, their DB. Yeah, yeah, no, that I saw that too. That was awesome. But it was from his catch uh, two weeks ago. Pop tart sent him a bunch of okay. pop tarts for us, and he had it laid out in the team room. Each chair had like two or three pop tarts on it. Felt like I mean dream for a line so it was yeah. good for us yeah ways to curry favor with a line as if you're not sure going to block well anyway right yeah but that helps <laughs> um tell us about growing up uh just down the road and uh did you go to a lot of rice games and uh in anything like uh locally that you yeah. did that inspired you to stick with football or the big brant banks uh, life story there yeah so i mean <laughs> i grew up going to a few rice games you know every every kid wants to go out and get the gloves signed and all that after the games and my dad played college football he went to texas state so not in houston but yeah. growing up that close to a division one program has its perks right so we, we could go out before the game wait for the players and and get to talk to them and Obviously, Houston has so much to offer. I mean, we could go to an Astros game or go to a Rice baseball game. And when I was growing up, they were the team to go watch. Mm -hmm. So we went to a lot of those. How tough or what has the transition been like assimilating? Because O-line, it's, it's not the easiest thing to pick up. Uh, but it seems like you've made that, that transition. Again, I say loosely in quotes with easy. Like, how has that been picking things up for you these few months? Yeah, so, I mean, physically it's, it's, it's pretty similar. You know, anywhere you go, being in the trenches is going to be pretty similar. you gotta got to be gritty and be able to finish people and all that. But mentally, I think the biggest part of that was going – coming here when I did in January and just spending as much time at the stadium as I could and trying to get in the playbook and, and get everything, you know, it's like second nature. And that's that's the only way, if you know a playbook, but like like the back of your hand, that's the only way you can really play free and, and play to the best of your ability. Coach mentioned that Texas game and improving after that. What have you seen where the, the unit has made some strides the last couple weeks? Yeah, no, I think obviously the game's slowing down too for, for a lot of guys because as, as you play more and more, it's going to eventually slow down because you start seeing things that you've seen before and, and seeing patterns. But also playing Texas the first game of the season was a pretty big test for us, and I think that was very beneficial for us coming out and playing a, a pretty tough opponent. Obviously, they just beat Alabama, so they're, they're doing pretty good this year. But um, for me, I love playing Texas because I, I grew up, you know, I was never really a Texas fan. Uh, I, was, I also wasn't really an A&M fan either, surprisingly. Yeah. But um, I got a lot of buddies there, so it was a little personal for me getting to go out and get to play them. Uh, so I'm jealous of the flowing locks you have. Um, and the public demands an answer here. Who has the best hair on the team if it is not you? If, and, it's, if it's not me. Huh? And, and, and I guess, hey, if you want to be the it's kind rough. of No, you, no, I got you. Because um, I'm telling you, 
you, you got a good good candidate there for, yeah. for top hair on the team. I, I mean, know. I mean, honestly, just wait till you see Ethan Oniawa hop up here. He's got a hell of a flow going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not bad, Ethan. Yeah. Yeah, you should see it. It's it's yeah. it's something to yeah. something to look at. Better than, who's got the best? I mean, you got the beard working too. <laughs> Any good? Yeah, see, I'm still working on that part. I got it on top of my head. The beard's still a little bit patchy, but you know, I've been growing it for about three years now, and this is kind of it's kind of all we got. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go with uh, Braden Nutter at center. I mean, he yeah, he's got a he's got a big burly beard and a little little Jason Kelsey beard going, so it's, yeah. it works for him. Maybe it's a lineman thing. Servin's got the. Oh yeah, he, he, he has too. a flow too. Yeah, he definitely he, he has a lot coming out of the back of his helmet, so it's it's cool for him. You mentioned NBA favorite class or two now at Rice. Favorite class? Yeah, anything that uh, yeah. struck your fancy? Yeah, uh, marketing was pretty cool. I just finished up marketing, but I mean, yeah, yeah let's go with marketing. That okay, was, that was a good one. Um, now that you have three games under your belt, just from a team concept, not just your unit, uh, what, what have you seen from the team that you're confident in and uh, these, these, I guess, a lot more games left in the regular yeah. season, uh, keys to the rest of the season and, and continuing this upward trajectory here? Yeah, so I think, I mean, especially as the season goes on, we, we're starting to become more, um, a lot closer, um, and that's, that's helping us, especially as O-line. You have to be a tight-knit unit, and I think we do a really good job of getting together on off days and, and trying to you know study film and do everything together because it just is only gonna make us closer and same thing with uh, JT like we went out to dinner or not dinner brunch with him last <laughs> Sunday after Houston so just just being around the guys as much as you can is only gonna benefit us hey thanks for coming appreciate it yeah, thanks for having us yeah fun. thank you so much no stranger to the mic uh, yes, sir. probably not the last time Grant Banks former Wildcat uh, uh, yes, yes, indeed. Stay with us. Coming up next, uh, Ethan Onianwo will stay with the uh, Houston and Owls connection coming up here. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show live here at Acme Oyster House from Learfield. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you got to park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. Shoppers has the right John Deere for your piece of Texas. If you're looking for a tractor, gator, or lawnmower, let the experts at Shoppers give you the right answers to your John Deere questions. Shoppers makes buying a piece of John Deere equipment easy with our online build it, price it, own it tool. You can add attachments specific to your needs or check out our ready to go John Deere tractor packages. See all that Shoppers has to offer by Googling Shoppers at S H O P P A S. Shoppers, equipment for your piece of Texas and proud sponsors of Rice Owl Athletic. Aw, oh, shucks. The game's on TV, but I can't listen to the call of my favorite team broadcasters. Never fear. Sync My Game is here. Uh, Sync My Game? Yes, Sync My Game. If you have a DVR and streaming device, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. It's never been easier to hear the impassioned voices of your favorite radio crew synced with the TV. Wow, uh, thank you, Mr. Just remember, SyncMyGame.com. Owls fans, you may not think of yourself as an athlete, but everyday life is full of athletic feats. You bend, you reach, you lift, you twist until back, neck, or shoulder pain hits, which brings you to a stop. So whether you're an athlete or not, the Joint Chiropractic can help ease your pain and keep you on the active list. Visit any of our 40-plus Houston area locations or thejoint.com today to get your first consultation exam and adjust for just $29. The Joint Chiropractic, the official chiropractor of Rice University Athletics. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show, live at Acme Oyster House. Here again, the voice of the owls, J.P. Yes, 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 you know it, you know it. Back here at Acme Oyster House, sticking at the O-line theme. He is uh, number 78 on our, our Rice Owls roster, Ethan Onianwa. Pride to the, all right, you told me, forgot already. Mascot? Oh, yeah, the Cougars. The, the Cougars of yep. Cinco, Katie Cinco Ranch. How are you doing, man? I've been good. It's been, been a good year since the last time I talked to you. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, so, like, from the same perspective of Brant, but you've been, what, your third year here with that yep. red shirt figured in. Do you feel like this time around, even though you had some successes in prior years, like, hey, the game's never easy, but it's, 
things are moving a little slower. Oh yeah, yeah, most definitely. It's just uh, it's just a process. You gotta trust the process and continue to improve. You know, um, you just can't be content in this game because I mean, if you're content, you wouldn't be in the position you're here right now. I mean, because Bloom and Coach Davis, you know, like that's that, that, that's what they focus on. You go to like, constant improvement and yeah, just I, I feel like from where I am since I last talked to you last year, <laughs> has been an improvement for me. Yeah, refresh us. For those that, that don't know, I remember you telling me, even before our last interview here in the offseason last year, how when you got that offer from Rice, you had other offers, but you knew that would be it. What, what was it that, that stood out where you knew this was the place for you? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, one of the coaching, you know, amazing coaches and just like the family here. And also, you know, a little bit of like me being like a mama's boy. I want to be close to home. Um, <laughs> be able to have a hunk of meals but yeah really the coaching and the education were huge big ones for me um you know as a bioengineer major rice has one of the top programs in the country and talking to coach bloom and coach davis when i was getting recruited um you could you could hear like the passion they have for the game the passion to help their players like develop and um you know those that that's why that's why i came here it was like the most genuine feeling i had uh, you're probably the one guy in the room that already knows how tough it is to, to juggle football and bioengineering. I know we have a few ex-players here, but um, give us a sample of what a regular day would be like uh, during the season. I know days of the week fluctuate with practice times, obviously, but just what's a, a typical day balancing the books and in, in practice and whatnot? Well, it's just uh, trying to sneak in as much time as possible for, for football in school. So, you know, like my morning workouts and then going to class and – you know, like around lunchtime, trying to um, either watch film or do some homework and then the meetings and practice. And then like night is like when I try to get all the, the work knocked out. So and you get because I, I like to spend at least an hour watching film and then doing homework and then alternating until, you know, I'm, I'm tired and it's time to go to bed. <laughs> but what yeah. inspired you to, to major in biomedical engineering? So. Initially, it was just because I wanted to go to med school, but I'm also starting to fall in love with the major, just the, the process of, of understanding how an uh, engineer can help um, like improve the body and improve um, just the overall function. Um, like During the spring, um, we had to work on a project and just like research like a bunch of different um, new practices in the field, and one of them was um, Using um, stem cells to help like regenerate heart heart muscle tissue, and that was like really interesting to me. And you know, I still do want to go to med school, but I'm also starting to fall in love more and more with the major itself. And with professional football as an option too, balancing oh, yeah. that obviously down the line. Uh, how, how does that figure in there? With I mean, still doing this as long as you can, but just waiting till that decision comes. Or? Yeah, is that, I, I, that's that's always going to be the goal. That's the main goal. Um, I feel like right right now, like NFL is always is always going to be the the top priority for me, and then you know that can always come later in life, you know. So I'm just that, that's that's what I'm focused on right now, just you know getting my degree and then you know getting to play per professionally, God willing. So who has uh, inspired you the most on the field from a, a lineman's perspective, or a coach, or uh, even a teacher? Like who would be some people that have really uh, kind of giving that extra boost when you need it or motivated you? Well, um, I, I would say probably my, my online coach. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's, a, it's a pretty corny answer, but, you know, um, like he always, he always used to tell me, he still does tell me that, you know, I have a lot of potential and um, just like me beginning to like realize, oh, I, I really can do this, you know, and um, that's, that's kind of been a huge boost in um, my confidence playing and I feel like that's, correlated to how I play on the field as well. Um, and then also, I've also been a huge fan of watching Tyrone Smith, like his whole highlights and stuff. And um, just when he was with the, when he was playing with the Cowboys, and I was just, yeah, like just like watching his highlights and how he plays and just like the confidence that he exudes on the field is something that, you know, I, I try to also replicate as well. And obviously a lot of linemen are big, but he's another six seven guy, yeah. really, really long arms. Big so, dude, yeah. Yeah. Um, Texans fan growing up, being around the area? Or? Yeah, a, a little bit, but um, I, wasn't, I didn't watch a whole lot of football. Like, my parents weren't really into it because, uh, <laughs> you know, they're, they, they immigrated from Nigeria and stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, I, I would say so, yeah. And I remember you telling me this in a different interview, but how old were you when uh, they immigrated over here? Um, I was six 
Well, or, or like like five turning six, yeah. Okay. So do you have any memories of being over there in that whole transition? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, um, the, yeah. Probably the biggest thing was just you know just like family and friends that are over there. But I mean, Houston's also a great place to be because like I feel like it's one of the most uh, authentic authentic places. Lots of good people, lots of different cultures. So you know, I mean, it was it was a, it was a shift, but it wasn't that big of a shift yeah. yeah so you heard brant there i don't know if you're blushing but he said you got the best uh flow on the team or whatever you young fellas are, are calling it up here so uh i mean i love you but that's that's yeah. a, a, quite a compliment coming from, so is that yeah. true and if not you then who who who's, yeah no I mean, he's he, he's being humble he, he most definitely has the best flow on the team uh-huh. um it, I, I wish i had hair like that <laughs> you know I, i'm I, i'm glad with my hair but just seeing brant with his hair just like you know, it's like straight out of like a movie or something like that. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe a couple years, huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe. So I asked this to Luke last week, and we got a, a funny answer. I'd be interested to hear you because you're such a nice guy, but you're able to flip that switch on the field. What's the funniest or strangest trash talk uh, someone has given you? Because I'm sure more away from the ball, uh, it's kind of <laughs> pretty, but it gets nasty down where oh, you yeah. guys are. What, what are some oh, funny yeah. things guys have said to you um, that we can say, I guess, here in a public setting? <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, one time someone was trying to shove me on the field, and like I just like wasn't moving at all, and then he was like, "Damn, like you, you like you're a you're a big dude." I was like, "Yeah, I, I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I didn't really have any any neat remarks, but yeah, <laughs> he tried to start something, he just he, this didn't work out for him." Yeah, he he knew not to push it too far. Yeah. Hey, uh, thanks for coming on again. You're you're a whiz at this, no surprise, and uh, go Owls. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, for you very me. much. The Dancing Bear, Ethan Oniano. That's a compliment, obviously, for those that don't know. Uh, stay tuned. Coming up next, we stick with the O-line. Sanders Davis joins us, the O-line coach, back here at Acme Oyster House. It's the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Hey, Oscar. Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar, the talking spokes oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char-grilled, a seafood platter or po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. Not you. Back me Oyster House. Life's more fun with seafood. At True Anomaly Brewing, our greatest achievement lives in knowing that everything we've learned is yours to enjoy. While it may not be rocket science, we brew with the same detail and dedication learned while running mission operations for NASA. Taking risks is part of our DNA. We don't take them just to say we did, we take them because of the result. Bold brews we're proud to share with fellow adventure seekers. True Anomaly Brewing. Beer for the explorers. The newly renovated Houston Marriott Medical Center Museum District is a proud new sponsor of Rice University Athletics. For visiting families and fans, the closest hotel to Rice University is delighted to offer preferred rates. Guests will enjoy two new restaurants, a new exclusive M Club Lounge, and complimentary shuttle service within two miles of the hotel. Visit Marriott.com to learn more. The passion. He's going to take it to the house. Dinner's cooking. Touchdown. The fury. Getting blessed. Down he goes. The speed. The 40. There he goes. Down the sideline. Western College football. For the end zone. Got it for six points. You cannot hitch the wagon. Put the ponies in the bar. Back in the end zone. 30. 20. This is the College Football Bliss. Listen all season long on College Sports Now on the Varsity Network. Which schools will take home the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup for the 2023-24 college athletic season? You can follow the standings of your favorite school or alma mater at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. That's thedirectorscup.com and L Directors Cup on Twitter. Trophies will be awarded in June 2024 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. You're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. We have the Rice Owls and the South Florida Bulls coming up Saturday. Coach Bloomgren and I will preview Alex Golish and his Bulls. Obviously, played Alabama really close, and we might touch on some of that with. Um, Now, what are we talking about? Fourth, fifth, sixth year O-line coach, Sanders Davis? Fifth fifth year. Going into your 
five. Yeah, I think fourth go. year is yeah. the O-line coach, yeah. Yeah, I'm an expert on my prep there, apparently. <laughs> I just assumed it would come off the, the top of the tongue there. But like Coach said, some and the, and the guys from their players' perspective, what, what have you seen from the growth of the – the big fellas in the trenches here so far early part of the season here yeah it's definitely early um but i've been i've been really pleased with with the growth right so we talk about small incremental improvement and that's the world that we have to live in to be good old linemen and um you know from week one to week two i thought we had a really big jump uh i don't think the the texas game went the way anybody you know planned it to go up front um but the thing i was really proud of within that game was that we never quit we never we never threw in the towel. We kept giving those guys our best shot from the from the start of the game to the end of the game, regardless of how the results went. Like, we want our guys to be focused on how they're approaching it, how they're growing, how they're playing the game, and to never get distracted by what the scoreboard says. Uh, you take that into the next week where we knew we had a lot of area to grow, and, and we knew we had to be better in the run game. We knew we had to be better in protection. We had to be more physical in general and finish blocks better in general. Uh, and I think you started to see that click for guys. You know, the protection was 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 better, by no means perfect, but it was it was significantly better uh, against a power five good front. You know, and so I thought we we took a good step in that direction. We were moving them a pretty good bit in the run game, and you know, then came that next week between between Houston and Texas Southern, which I think you know sometimes after a big win. Uh, a coach's biggest fear can be that next week, especially if isn't if it isn't the same caliber of opponent that you were playing. And you can find guys, you know, in, in speaking in generalizations, you can you can find guys who who just aren't in it as as hard as they should be, or they they view this week that week as is one that they could take it a little bit easier. And I don't think I ever felt that with our guys, which is so important when you talk about growing from week to week small incremental improvement if you get distracted by who your opponent is that's going to inhibit your growth but when you're focused on you when you're focused on your process when you're focused on how you can get better regardless of the opponent regardless of the scoreboard that's when the magic can really happen and i felt like we had that with our guys last week and and i thought you saw another step that we needed to take in terms of getting the run game you know more consistent um and the protection was 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 lights out I don't I mean there was one time I think we had a guy in the vicinity of the quarterback and so mm. to just see that small incremental growth is great and we have to keep doing that and I think the the product is going to get better and better and better so I'm 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 happy with these guys but again we're by no means a finish a finish group you heard Ethan talking about your influence on him discuss him and what you've seen as you, when you've told me when we're just talking during the summer I know recently you're like hey this the maturation he's had has been been very uh, evident with the tape. So, what what have you seen from him develop on and off the field? <clears throat> sure. So, I, I think if you if you talked to Ethan last year, you know, like he would he would probably think his middle name was was a, a, a you know an expletive, like yelling at him <laughs> a lot, you know. And um, now it's almost like when I watch practice, it's almost like a blank spot at that right tackle because I I trust him so much. I think. Things are going to get done so well. He understands the system. He very rarely has an MA or very rarely falls through on his technique. And so uh, I think that's probably the best compliment that I could give him is, is it was somebody that I felt I had to micromanage, and he's turned into a guy that I don't feel like I have to, to, to stare him down. You know, and, and, and he talked about his schedule, and there are nights where I'm leaving, I'm leaving the building at you know 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning, and he's still in there studying or watching film. And when I tell you he's one of the hardest workers that I've ever been around in my life, period, I, I, I truly mean that. Like, he is so dedicated to his career and his education. He's so dedicated to the game of football. And, you know, when, when, if he ever makes a mistake in practice, like, I, I can, there, it is impossible for me to beat him to the punch. He will have already watched the film. He would have already had it dissected. He'll be able to tell me why it happened. And so when you have guys like that that are so – so focused on their own growth and their own personal uh, steps forward. You know, I think that's when the magic happens. Because even as a coach, you can you can talk to guys till you're blue in the face, but that doesn't mean that it's necessarily the message is being received. And and I think that there's never a doubt in my mind that when we coach Ethan on something, that it'll show up again. You know, or it might be an absolute accident, but he very rarely makes the same mistake twice. And so I think that speaks volumes to his process. I think it speaks volumes to who he is as a football player, and, and I think 
the future is, is only brighter for him moving forward. Yeah. How about on the other side, uh, Clay Servant, who had a 40-game start streak end, uh, but just what he has meant on that other side, athletic uh, left tackle. Yeah, so, you know, Clay is, is incredibly, um, that's the word I'm looking for, he's really solid in pass protection, you know, and, and the challenge going into this year, and, and he's, a, he's a wicked smart football player too. Um, he understands defenses, he understands how and why defenses are going to do certain things, so he's often able to diagnose any issue that might that might show up before it happens. Um, but his challenge, you know, this year was, you know, you've got to continue to develop in the run game, and sometimes that can be hard for a guy who's been in a program for so long, um, and and has been, you know, reliable throughout their tenure. It can be difficult to see, like, okay, hey, this part of my game is lacking. And uh, I think he's really bought into that. He's, he's put a lot more physical play on film. Um, and again, like, that's where the magic happens, especially at O-line, is when guys are willing to put egos aside and understand where they need to improve to continue to take those next steps. And, and when you have a room full of guys that are willing to do that, when you have a room full of guys that, that, that don't get defensive when you give them feedback, you know, and, and they want feedback and they want to grow, I think that's where, where really good things start to happen for a football team, and, and I certainly think we felt that with Clay these last few weeks. So you're playing at a South Florida team that most know um, only uh, allowed, what, the 17 points from their, their defense against Alabama. So what's the, I guess, early scouting report on their defensive line and just conceptually defense with Coach Orlando, who has coached against Rice, of course, a number of times recently? Yeah, so we've, we've, we've gone up against him several times. Um, you know, and I think the the big deal with him is just being under uh, being able to understand he's going to bring every pressure, every movement pattern known to mankind. You know, when you when you typically talk about a team, it's like, okay, well, what what blitzes? What are the blitzes that these guys are going to bring? And when you ask that about him, it's all of them. You know, is the right answer because he's going to bring every pressure, every line movement that that you can imagine. And, and that's a little bit of a, a two-sided coin. So, you know, part of it is, is as an O-line, you have to be able to sort through all that. The other side of it is they're not typically like downhill right at you. And so it becomes a lot more, it, it, physicality is certainly important, but it also becomes making sure we're in the right places at the right time, feeling the movement the right way together. And so when you when you practice for a team like this, it's a lot more you know, full line work. It's a lot more rehearsal of the patterns more so than it is on we're just working this one block and we're just working this one block. And so I think a, a big part of our success moving forward is th th for this particular week is being able to recognize those patterns and sort through those patterns. And, and if we can do that, it's like years past and teams that have played him before, when you can work through all that stuff, there are a lot of big plays to be had. And so it's, it's very much a high risk high reward defense um, even in the passing game they're going to bring they're going to bring an extra rusher at times whether it's on purpose or not and you're going to have receivers that are literally unguarded on the field and so we have to be able to protect well enough even if they bring that extra hat that we can't account for we got to get big and be able to eat all that up and let our quarterback who we all know is really special do his thing mm -hmm. so finally uh don't pretend everybody out there remembers us talking i think each year you have a, a really cool backstory how you connected with coach so i'll just kind of ask it in a different way do you ever think i'm sure you do but if you didn't send that direct message to coach bloomgren all those years ago where you would be kind of that I forget the movie sliding like one choice that kind of the the tentacles and pathways are, are so different for you, huh? Yeah, I don't know where I would be. I mean, I was really, really happy at my job that I, that I had before, before I came here. Um, and I wasn't willing to leave that job for just anybody, you know. And so being able to have the opportunity to come work with Coach Bloomgren. And I was actually thinking about this while he was up here speaking or, and when, when our line guys were up here speaking. And a big part of the reason that I admired Coach Bloom so much is, is because I felt like the guys that he coached were guys that were like me at one point in, in high school. They were guys that wanted to strive academically but also really loved the game of football. And, you know, I was sitting over there and I'm listening to these two guys talk, you know, one who's uh, getting a, one of the most prestigious MBA program uh, degrees in the country, another one who is getting the one, you know, one of the most prestigious biological engineering degrees in the country and it's like oh like this is why i like this is it like this is really who i wanted to be around and sure enough here we are and so 
Um, I've been really, really fortunate for Coach Bloom to, to take me under his wing like he did and, and then trust me with this position. But, you know, I've been really fortunate to be around the guys that I've been able to be around these past few years too. Hey, thanks for the time. As always, appreciate the wisdom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sanders Davis of our Owls on the O-line. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we'll uh, get Coach Bloomgren back up here and talk about Coach Golish and his USF Bulls rounding out the Mike Bloomgren show here from Acme Oyster House from Learfield. Flight by Yingling, the next generation of light beer. For those who don't follow trends, but craft them. Flight by Yingling is uncompromised refreshment from America's oldest brewery. With only 2.6 grams of carbs and 95 calories, this is premium refreshment. Six generations in the making. Don't just raise a glass, raise the bar. Flight by Yingling, the official beer partner of Rice Athletics. And now available for purchase everywhere in Texas. The Yingling Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Please enjoy responsibly. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you gotta park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. Rice teams and traditions are legendary. Our team as strategic wealth designers are proud to be a partner of Rice Athletics. What an honor to be working together. When you're ready to discuss your financial future, call the team the Owls Trust. We look forward to creating your winning strategy for retirement. Visit us at swdgroup.com today and go Owls. Football fans are passionate, just like John Deere fans. And if you're a John Deere person, the name to know is Shoppers. In football, it's about calling the right place. The right call for John Deere equipment is Shoppers. Shoppers has a right size John Deere tractor with attachments for any job. You can build your tractor online with Shoppers exclusive Build It, Price It, Own It tool. See all our John Deere specials by Googling Shoppers at S H O P P A S. It's time for you to make the right call. Shoppers, equipment for your piece of Texas, and proud sponsor of Rice Alice. Athletics. Highlighting the owls on the gridiron. Welcome back to the Mike Bloomgren Show. All right, on. Final segment here looking uh, towards USF and uh, Coach Alex Goldish here in a uh, nanosecond. But how about Brant and how about Ethan? Never get tired of hearing those different stories, Coach. Yeah, it's, it's crazy listening to Coach Davis talk about that time, you know, because – and these young men we get to work with, it's such a privilege. Like, I remember one time uh, when I was the offensive line coach and coordinator at Stanford, they wrote an article of a quote that I said, and it was, I'm the dumbest guy in the room, and I love it. And I still feel that today when I'm hanging out with these dudes. I mean, just think about that for a second. Like a Rice MBA, uh, Ethan with the bioengineering, and, and Coach Davis went to Dartmouth, for God's sakes. Like, you know, I mean, all these smart guys around here. So – uh, but I, before we touch on South Florida, I do want to talk about girlfriends real quick. Okay. Uh, Brant Banks' girlfriend was an All-American volleyball player at Nebraska. She's now playing overseas in Italy. She was in Puerto Rico in the spring. Wow. He got to go see her. Uh, but she and him are going to make some good youngins if this thing works out. And I've told him before, <laughs> that, that kid has an offer. Uh, <laughs> And then when you talk about Ethan and girlfriends, uh, the room gets on him sometimes, and they're like, man, you got to watch out for those gold diggers. And Ethan being the naive <laughs> mama's boy he is, he was like, I don't have any money. What are you talking about? And everybody's like, yet. You don't have any money yet. <laughs> uh, so that's the truth with Ethan. Yeah, always got to have your boys in the room that can, can give you that, that truth, that wisdom. Absolutely. Right? Um, so how about Coach Golish? I, I talked to him, and I'm pretending to know too much about him, but he's got a fascinating backstory and just what he did at Tennessee and I guess the small tie that you reminded me as uh, got Rice Connection when he was at Tennessee too, right? Yeah, Jerry Mack had always told me kind of about how he ran things and, and certainly that system, the hypo system, and uh, you know how, intri how intriguing it is and how intricate it is, even though it seems like, hey, they're just about going fast. You know, that's what when you watch them, that's what's talked about in the media. That's what everybody in the SEC wants to talk about is how you got to get your feet set, and it's the only thing you got to worry about. And there's certainly other things to it too, but 
Uh, some of the numbers they've put up at Tennessee over the last two years that Alex was a part of was pretty impressive. Yeah, I'm blanking on the new version of that spread. It's kind of akin to what Coach Bryles started at Baylor, right, and Kendall continued. But what's the different spin that, 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 that they do at South Florida? Hypel is really particular about some of the op- option routes that they run down the field. You know, some of the things that they do and the way that they read it, and that's some stuff that uh, I-, I really don't know enough to talk about. You know, you see it. I-, I don't know the reads. I see the end result. I don't know exactly how they get there. But the other thing they do is just by, by running plays so fast is they run a normal inside zone play. And if somebody's not set or they're out of their gap, the thing just gashes, and, and their receivers are spread so far to the sideline. They're really making you play the entire 53 and a third yards of the field, much like Bay that those things become gashes they become home runs and that's what we got to make sure it doesn't happen and they got the nation's attention by holding it really tight against number 10 Alabama for so close so long of that game it ended up being 17-3 but what did you notice from that one anything different than what you kind of knew going in no I, I think we knew going in to watching that film that hey USF has brought in a lot of transfers they are not last year's USF like they, they are a different team from the coaching staff to virtually every player on that roster so I'm not surprised to see that they stood toe-to-toe because they are so talented. Uh, but we've got to go in there, and, and we've got to execute at a really high level. I mean, that's what a great challenge for our football team going into the first game in the American Conference. Uh, my big message to the team right now is there is no doubt we have become a good football team. But if we want to be great and if we want to do the things that we talk about, that, that jump from good to great is so freaking hard. I mean, think about all the books that have been written about it. And it's got to take constant, constant commitment and making sure we're working our process every day and taking those positive steps every day to get us to be the team we want to be. And this is this is an unbelievably high challenge. We're going to have to play really well for 60 minutes to get this dub. That'll be the AAC opener on Saturday. Talk to you tomorrow, Coach. Appreciate yes, it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dunleavy Family Head Football Coach for Rice House, Mike Bloomgren. We'll be on air here. 2.30 here across the Bayou City and beyond. Uh, Nate, Walter, and me, and David Pillen on the broadcast, nice. boss. So he'll be with us coming up on Saturday. Rice and South Florida have a great – thanks to the old linemen here for joining us. How about the Wildcats, Brand Banks? How about them? Let's go. They doing okay this year? Yeah, you don't you keep up with them? Nah, not so. Okay. <laughs> They're, they're coming. They're going better. Uh, thanks to Ethan on the online, and, of course, the great Sanders Davis for Coach Bloomgren and Walter. Thanks to Clara back in the studio. I'm J.P. Heath. Have a great night. God bless. Go Owls. Rice fight. Talk to you Saturday from South Florida. This has been the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield, you've been listening to the Mike Bloomgren Show.